On Super Bowl Sunday in February of 2022, something happened that completely changed the way I lived and worked for the rest of the year. For the third time on the soccer field, I tore my ACL. I was devastated, especially because I'd been through this before. I knew I had to travel to Las Vegas for a work conference in a few weeks, and I knew I had a real estate team to lead, and I also knew that I had played my last competitive soccer match ever. I know this doesn't really have anything got to do with real estate, and that this is a slightly different video uh, than you're used to on our channel, but I thought that I would share my story in the hopes that you would gain some value from it. If you're going through an injury like this, uh, hopefully this video helps you get through it. Even if you aren't injured like I was, hopefully the story inspires you in some way. So it all started at an indoor soccer match uh, in the winter earlier this year. It was late in the game and the score was tied. We were on offense, but the ball was cleared and went straight to their lone attacker. Uh, I tried to step in front of him to intercept and while he was trying to shield the ball, we collided and my ACL literally snapped in half. Uh, it was quite loud and it was immediately obvious. Uh, it was extremely painful, obviously, but only for about 15 minutes or so. I knew this pain, I've had it before, and I knew it was my ACL right away. The pain of knowing what was ahead of me for the next 12 months was way worse. I took the next day off from work and was booked in to see a surgeon that very day, thanks to a referral from my primary physician, Meg McRae. I was okay going into my first appointment with the surgeon because I knew exactly what to expect and was, even at this early stage, excited to get my recovery and PT started. This is a nine to 12 month process uh, and I knew the sooner it began, the sooner it would be over. Uh, the surgeon um, first scheduled an x-ray and then an MRI based on the swelling and my assurances that I knew I had torn it. Uh, once confirmed, I was not surprised or disappointed and I'd already accepted my fate. With Vegas coming up so quickly, uh, I was eager to get my daily PT exercises down and learn what I could do to have the best possible outcome this time around. I made a PT appointment at NPT HealthWorks with Dr. Liz, who got me started right away on the uh, prehab exercises as well as education on what the surgery would look like and what expectations I might have uh, as I prepare for my trip to Vegas. I felt ready to use the time before surgery to recover from the initial injury uh, and feel as strong as possible. Surgery was April 14th. Uh, I was a little nervous, of course, it is major surgery, uh, but honestly, I was extremely excited to get it done and get to day one of the recovery as I knew how long the road ahead was going to be. This time, my surgeon and I chose a cadaver graft as I had previously used my patellar graft in my last ACL. Uh, surgery. I felt better this time around as medical technology has improved significantly since 2007 and the surgery has evolved. However, post-operative management meant that I had to remain mostly off my feet for the first four weeks, working mainly from home and manage medications to ensure that I was staying ahead of pain and inflammation. As can sometimes happen, the pain medications can have side effects such as nausea or drowsiness and I chose to mainly focus on ice and rest as my main comfort measures. I was in touch with Dr. Liz who helped me answer questions about what is normal as well as offer suggestions for pain management which was very reassuring in my recovery. Everybody's body deals with anesthesia and pain differently so it is helpful to be in touch with your surgeon or trusted PT to ensure you're doing everything you can to make immediate post-operative days as comfortable as possible. I was back driving in about two weeks and back to work at the office in about four weeks. I had to ensure that I had some time to build into my day to continue to ice and manage my schedule in a way that didn't exhaust me. Once I was able to wean off the crutches around week six, the recovery became much more straightforward. I still wore a brace to protect my knee, but also to remind me of the surgery and to let others know to be careful and mindful around me. I had PT started about four weeks before my surgery, and I highly advise you do the same. Dr. Liz was very clear that decreasing the swelling from the acute injury and getting full range of motion back into my knee were crucial ways to ensure a quicker healing process post-surgery. She put me on an exercise routine that I could do myself at Pulse Gym. That involved working on a range of motion, engaging my thigh and calf muscles. Uh, many of these exercises would then become part of my routine after surgery, so it helped me get a sense of what I could expect in the future. Without being able to efficiently use my leg, uh, I was losing muscle tone very quickly. Dr. Liz encouraged me to gain as much of my range of motion and strength as we could because it would only make the recovery smoother. As she put it, ideally, we would like you to be in such great shape while your walking pattern, range of motion and strength uh, that by the time your surgery day comes, you almost feel like you don't even need to have the surgery. There are certain cases where people do not get this surgery, but based on my active lifestyle 
and my own personal choice, I knew surgery was the right option for me. Hey, how are you, Joe Fitzpatrick here, Fitzpatrick team. We're heading into Pulse this morning for a workout with, uh, with... hey, my lovely wife, Lisa. Hi, what's going on? Lisa works here at Pulse. She teaches bar and... Mostly bar, a little Mostly spin. Bar, a little yeah. spin. So check out her classes. Yay. Lisa Fitzpatrick. Yay. See you later, babe. Bye. So we're heading into uh, our workout with uh, with Chris here. He's putting together all upper body stuff for me while, I, while I'm still kind of getting back to walking, never mind running. Uh, Joe came to me about six weeks ago and I, he heard his knee had some surgery and he'd never done upper body. So we figured we'd take that opportunity to work with him twice a week for just 30 minutes and just really focus on upper body for him. Like, like I said, he'd never done it, so his strength was a little weak on the upper body. He's come a long way and, and his knee's getting better and he's moving about pretty good and I think his, he's a lot stronger and he had said he had some shoulder issues in the past and I, I feel like he's probably overcome them because we just strengthened them uh, pretty well. So yeah, that's, that's where he's at today. Hey, just got done with Chris. That was my last workout with him. We booked six weeks of sessions, heading over to uh, NPT now for some uh, physical therapy, but that was a really, uh, that was a really great workout, and I really thank Chris. Hey, Jackie. Hi, hey. Hi, hey. Hey. Hey, Jackie. Up. Chris beat him up again. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually Chris's wife, Jackie. She is the owner of Pulse Gym. Say hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. Say hi. Awesome, you should check Pulse out Pulse. Gym, which wouldn't be here unless this guy helped me out about five years well, ago. Well, I did negotiate that lease, that is he true. He did, he did. Hey, nice <laughs> he to see you. Nice to see you too. I gotta go beat somebody up. Okay, yeah. go get him. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so heading over to MPT Sports right now. Because of all my prehab, I was able to get moving right into PT after surgery, which focused on post-operative pain management, managing the swelling, the range of motion, since these are the most crucial things immediately after surgery. Dr. Liz worked with me on my walking pattern, and I was able to wean off the crutches when I no longer had a limp. I continued to ice and work on exercises at home in between our sessions, and we slowly began strength training and biking to build back lost muscle. Dr. Liz continued to educate me on the healing process and reminded me to be patient as the graft healed. I likewise followed up with my surgeon, who was very pleased with my progress. So, hi, I'm Dr. Liz Kilsey. I work over at Newport HealthWorks, and I've been working with Joe since the beginning. Um, he called me the day that he thinks, thought he tore his ACL, and uh, we kind of figured he did, which was unfortunate, but pretty quickly we were able to get him in with um, a surgeon and for him to have surgery. We met a little bit before, um, did some prehab to really get him going, which is super important. Um, so he knew what to expect post-op, which is always a difficult first two weeks, um, but he made it through. It wasn't pretty, but he made it through, which was good. Um, and then we we started working together, working on improving his range of motion, getting his strength back, um, getting him walking again normally, um, eventually off the crutches, onto one crutch to no crutches, um, and better able to get back to work and get out in the community. So now we're just continuing to improve his range of motion and his strength, make sure he can go up and down the stairs, and uh, just get him cruising along through the, the protocol. And his surgeon gave him a, a great report the first round, so things are going really well and uh, we'll keep working. The period I would most like to warn you about is the time frame between week 10 and 16. During this time frame, you're going to be walking normally, the swelling will have gone significantly, if not entirely, and you will be forgiven if you forgot you even had surgery recently. However, this is uh, the point in time where the graft becomes weak as part of its healing process, and you can be vulnerable to re-injury if you're not mindful of the protocol. As Dr. Liz reminded me, if you know you have an active lifestyle, wearing your brace a little bit longer can help remind you to slow down. It's crucial during this time to focus on the PT and make sure you do not do too much too fast as that can set you back. Regaining full range of motion and strength ensures you walk correctly and ensures your knee will be protected long term. You simply cannot rush this healing process and your PT can be very helpful in talking you through return to exercises as you progress. Right now I'm 16 weeks out and looking forward to walking for exercise uh, on a treadmill which will lead to light jogging hopefully by week 20. I continue to work with Dr. Liz to progress my exercises in preparation for being cleared to run. Um, there are certain factors of strength, motor control and endurance that I will need to uh, hit in order to safely return to running. Uh, plus a lot of patience. 
It was a little depressing, I have to admit, in the first couple of weeks, but I've accepted the fact that I will not play again and I'm okay with it. I feel good physically. The only issue I ever have with my knee is when I overdo it a little bit while walking. But other than that, I'm healing quite nicely. I put on about a bit of stone, but honestly, that's expected. Uh, I'm confident these pounds will drop off once I'm uh, back running consistently and taking part uh, in local races again. The one thing I would share with anybody else going through this is to start PT before surgery. This made no sense to me, but ended up being huge and made my progress through the healing uh, post-surgery so much quicker and easier. Continue taking the anti-inflammatory and ice all the way through week 16 or until you feel the swelling is completely gone. The main thing I got out of this personally was getting my Sundays back uh, between travel, pre-game, playing 90 minutes, uh, post-game refreshments. Um, you know, I was spending about five hours away from my family every Sunday, which is my only day off. I literally did this for decades uh, and never questioned how much time it took. When I was looking for a new hobby, I narrowed it down to uh, golf or fishing, but ended up replacing that time with my family. And for that, at least, I am thankful uh, and can reference the silver lining. I hope you guys found this video helpful and inspirational. If you did, feel free to leave a like uh, and subscribe to the Fitzpatrick team on YouTube. If you want to see more different content like this, comment down below and let us know. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.